This tutorial is part of a YouTube playlist. You can access this and many more of the tutorials in this course. If you do like this YouTube playlist and you want to access the whole course, you can do on Udemy. The link to the YouTube playlist and YouTube course is in the video description. We are now ready to start querying our database. So we need to make sure that our database is active. And then what we do to begin with is just manually add some data into the database so that we can build an API route to return all category data. So let's remember that we are using Docker for hosting our database. So I'm just going to delete all the containers, start fresh. Let's move back into the application here. Um, so I'll CD back over to the main directory. If you're not in the main directory where the Docker Compose file resides, let's go ahead and Docker Compose and then up and then make sure that work is working in the background. So our database is up and ready. So what we need to do now is head back to Adminer. So 127001 colon 8080, don't forget the dots. Uh, so let's go ahead and access our Postgres database. Postgres. Postgres, Postgres, it's all Postgres. No, no, it's not, it's FK Commerce. Okay, so let's log in. Okay, so we have um, our database. There are no tables, so we are going to need to make a migration first. So let's do that, make sure we're in the right directory. Uh, so we need to be in the FK Commerce directory. Okay, so we do have the docs folder, remember? If you've forgotten, so we need to initialize all good. Oh, actually, um, directory migrations will exist. Oh, okay. So let's do that again. Let's come out and let's make sure we've deleted the migration folder. Do that first. Okay. So let's do that again. There we go. Right. So we've now recreated the, the migration folder. It's all fresh. Let's go ahead and run our first migration. Okay, it looks like we're good to go there. And then let's actually apply the migration. Okay. Back to Adminer, let's go ahead and refresh. All the tables have now been populated. Well, the table, the database has been populated with the tables. There we go. Right, so the category table, let's move into the category table. Let's go ahead and add new item. So let's give this ID one name test category one. So let's give it a slug of test cat one and then is active. Yeah, that's fine. Press save. And then we have the first record in our table. Okay, so with that done, just close some of this down. Right, so let's now go into the core inventory app, inventory API route. Now we need to actually build a query to return data should someone access this endpoint, this category endpoint here. Right, so for that, really simple, really easy. Um, here we just need to return something. So let's go ahead and return category. So that's the name of the table, dot query, and dot all. Okay. Now obviously category is referring to a model. So we are going to need to bring in our models here so we can access our models. So from dot, oh no, from core dot models. That's where our models reside, our models module here. And from there, we want to import the category. Okay, you can now see that that has been resolved. Okay, so now we need to actually run our Flask application. So let's go for a Flask run. So it looks like Mm, we've we provided a warning here. So Flask SQL Alchemy integration requires Marshmallow SQL Alchemy to be installed. Okay, that's not a problem. So it looks like we're going to need to install that before we do anything else. So let's make sure that we do that. So Marshmallow SQL Alchemy. Okay, right. So let's just make sure we're in the right place. So cd dot dot slash. Let's go up to the main directory. Let's go ahead and pip install. Marshmallow SQL Alchemy. And then we do a pip freeze. Okay. So let's now CD back into our project. And then let's run the Flask run once again. 
So we have a warning. That's not a problem. It looks like everything is running fine. And now we need to test our endpoint. Now we have a few options here. Uh, let's go ahead and install Thunder Client. So in the extensions, I've typed in Thunder. You can see Thunder Client, 3.3 million downloads. Let's give this a go. So we'll go ahead and install this. So on the left hand side now, you can see we have this new icon. Um, so we can start to now think about making a request to our endpoint. So the endpoint, we're going to make a get request, and that's going to be to our endpoint here. Okay, slash, remember the API. Remember we set the, get rid of that. Uh, remember we set the, uh, in the initialization file here, we set the prefix of API. And then in our roots, we've defined slash category. So we're going to need to make a request to our server API slash category. So we'll just send that. You can see that it's not found. Okay, so we do have an issue. So the problem we have here is that we probably haven't actually initialized our endpoints. So let me just close this down. Okay, let's go back. Let's see if we can get some clarity here. So here we initialize our blueprints, but what we also need to do is to add the routes that we've defined. So in our initialization file here, we need to uh, from dot import routes. Now you can see when I press save, it will be removed. So I will go ahead and add the no QA F 401. Um, yep, so that's all good. So we probably don't need to, but let's just close the server. Oh, lots going on here now. And let's run the server once again. So, hmm, okay, so marshmallow object has no attribute sting. Of course it doesn't. Right, so let's go back into the root here. We've just made a mistake here, it looks like, in our schema. We go back to our schema just here. So it does look like now we are actually trying to register our blueprints, our roots. So that's all good. So I changed that. Let's go ahead and run that. So this time we're all good to go. Right, so let's go back into the Thunder client here. Now we already made this request, so we can just click on that and then send again. And this time you can see we get a response from the server and that's the data from the category table. So congratulations, if you've got this far, you've managed now to create a request from a client. So we're simulating here the, the client. So that might be um, maybe your website where you use a React application or Next.js or something similar like that. You made a request from your client to the server. The server has then handled that request, made a query to the database, returned the data from the database. It's then serialized that data using our schema and then sent that back to the client. And that's the data that we're receiving from our server. So let's go for a not well drawn picture to show you that. So the client, we made a request from the client. And the request we made was in this case, it was uh, 127.0.0.1 uh, colon 5000. That's the port of the server or the service. That's what we're listening for on the server slash. And then we had this prefix of API and then category. So that's what we've sent to our server. That's the request. Obviously what's happened is that's then been sent to our server, passed into our Flask application. Now our Flask application has processed this request. So it has looked at the request, identified um, a resource, which is associated to slash API slash category. Now, obviously what we've done first is we run a, a query. So we've run a query on the database and that was re to return all the category data. So what's returned from the database is all the category data. That's the query that we created. So at this point, we've got a, a Python object, no doubt, um, with all the data returned from the database. So what we've then done is we passed that data through our schema via um, API Ferry. It's validated that data 
and then it serialized that data into a JSON format. Now we've defined in our schema what data we want to return, and that was the ID, name, and slug. So that data was then prepared in JSON and then sent back to the client. Now, if this is your first time, it might seem quite overwhelming, the stages, the amount of setup that's required in order to build such what you might consider quite a simple task. Now, over time, this will become much more familiar. Whether you're building in Flask or Django or Fast API or any of the other um, API frameworks that you might use in Python, the process is very much the same. It's the same concepts. You need to have a request. That request is then matched to a resource. We then run a query. We then return the data. It's then passed through a schema and then it's sent back to the client using some sort of friendly format, in this case, JSON. So that really is the basic process of retrieving data from uh, utilizing an API. And it doesn't necessarily change. That's, I think, the point I'm trying to get to. So you'll familiarize yourself very quickly with that. And you'll be able to, with that knowledge, feel a little bit more comfortable now if you wanted to maybe utilize Fast API or uh, the Django DRF uh, framework, the process is very much the same. So you're just asking yourself, well, how do I do that? How do I do that step? How do I do that step? So although you might not understand fully the framework, you have a basic understanding of what it is you need to achieve to, in this case, return data from the database.